Hey, what's up, guys? David Glenn of davidglennrecording.com, theproaudiophiles.com, and my new site is themixacademy.com. Super excited about today's tutorial. I'm going to be talking to you about how to get creative with a stereo drum loop. I've got a mix here I did for uh, my buddy Abner Cepeda. His band is called uh, Ministerial Sons of God, and uh, I've got a pretty sweet track. We've got some strings, we've got a loop, we've got some piano, and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, put this one in maybe like a pop rock country type vibe, modern country. And uh, the loop was sent to me, it's just one stereo drum loop. And uh, a lot of times that's great. I do production, I'll drag loops that I like and um, create around it, and that's totally cool. It happens all the time. But in the mix stage, I wanted to get a little bit more creative with this loop, and so um, this is inspired by a tutorial I saw years ago from Russ over at Pro Tools Expert, where he took a, a loop and he duplicated it a bunch of times, and then he would go in and hack up the kick, the snare, the hat, and break it all up. And then he even, I think he ended up changing the groove of it uh, and doing something different with those same sounds. Well, in this case, we're going to keep the groove the same, and we're not going to hack things up, so to speak, with um, audio by cutting and cropping and putting them on the grid. Instead, we're going to duplicate. We're going to use EQ, compression, transient designing, automation, reverb, all kinds of good stuff to try to bring this drum loop to life. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to play it for you. Then I'm going to show you the original. I'm going to walk you step by step, track by track, so you can do something similar in your own production and uh, and get creative next time you send a uh, just a limited stereo file. So here we go. Here's what I did to the to the loop, and then I'll show you the original. Pretty straightforward, but uh, a little bit cleaner. Let's hear the original. Just come in here and shift M. So now this up top is the original with uh, the producer had a multi-delay. I can show you that. Uh, probably worth seeing before and after. Here's his loop before the delay. Okay, and then we'll show you after the delay. Actually, that reverb was and the sub splash was mined from the loop let's go here cool pretty straightforward we've got just a loop multi-tap left and right action going on helping to create a uh, a groove let's hear that in the track and we got my automation turned off there cool Okay, so it's a taste thing. His loop has a lot more uh, resonant low end, but I felt like that tone didn't match the vibe um, or the key of the song. So what I did is I, I did a little bit of a trick with the sub. So instead of having a big ringy sub right down the middle and it just sustains and it's just one loop kind of doing one thing, uh, I got creative with this. So let's break it down. This is a track. Pretty much all I did was I duplicated it um, wants to create a loop lows and i went in and removed all the highs got some eq we'll touch that in a second then i have a loop where it's the mid-range all the lows are gone from this track and then i took the sizzle out of it so everything above what 10k or so is gone and then i duplicated uh, this one down here called sizzle verb where it's just the top end above 3k and then i also cropped the snare right here and that you'll see there's no volume to it and it's going pre-fader just to a sunset chamber from the Bricasti m7 uh, i've got those impulse responses from the simplicity website and that sounds like this that's all it is that snare so the low end let's break this down here's in solo 
and you'll see this automation. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let me bypass that. Okay. I'm going to bring back this uh, subsplash reverb, but pretty much what I'm doing there with the automation is I've got the Pro-Q2 and watch this thing and, and how it's set up. Okay. So bypass is um, automated on and off for this right here. You've got 50 hertz and below is going to be in for the first hit. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I've got a reverb automated as well, a subsplash, and I've got that coming on only for that first hit. You can see it's muted for the second hit, it's there for the first hit. So let's listen to that subsplash. I said that backwards. It's muted for the first one, it's in for the second. So listen to that one more time. So there's a clean kick, and then you've got a subsplash that fills the sides of the speakers with um, low end reverb. Pretty cool, right? That sub splash is set up down here, and uh, I've got this going to the 224 with just some low end decay, what around four seconds or so. And then I'm EQing that, a little bit unique here. I've got a mid side EQ. I'm pulling out the lows from the middle because I want the loop to be in the middle, not the sub reverb splashes. Follow me with that. I've got the reverb in MS mode, removing the signal from the middle so that it only has low end and shakes the sides a little bit. So I'm boosting here, you can see S for sides, I'm boosting uh, all of that around 40 hertz or so, and I'm removing it down the middle. So boosting on the sides, cutting down the middle, and then I'm limiting this to just the um, 100 hertz and below. So. That is the gist of that. The only other thing that I did processing wise was I boosted the attack in the sub frequencies. This is a multiband transient designer from Alloy 2, Isotopes Alloy 2. And you can see everything below here is going to get a little bit more punch. And I cut the sustain on it because I wanted to be able to control it with that EQ. So that first one is kind of a, uh, uh, a low frequency, doom, kind of a sustaining kick. The second one is tight but it triggers the subsplash. So it's got this little tug and pull kind of vibe going on. Without it, it would sound like this. With it, it sounds like this. Cool, chokes it a little bit, right? Gives it a little more of a tighter controlled feel. And uh, and I really like that when I'm, when I'm working with kicks. So I can create around that uh, rhythm rather than it just kind of being fluffy and sustaining like a pillow just I don't know I don't know how to explain it but I liked it that's what I did moving on from there I got pie on all my tracks um, you'll start seeing that in the tutorials but um, that then the loop goes to a bus called loop the sub splash goes to all the effects and that'll be important in a second I'll explain the, the subs and low end uh, in mono Next up, we had this track, and all I did for this one was EQ'd it, and then uh, brought the level in. This one was simply this. Cool. So that's the loop, just EQ so that I can control the level of those elements within that EQ range. Next up, I have the snare broken apart. I already showed you that. We're going to the uh, sunset chamber, and that's all it is. Just triggering that reverb so that it gives it a little bit of a space. And then that also has pi on it. Moving on from there, I have a track called Sizzle Verb. Here again, it's just the regular loop before any processing. Cool. Then I'm EQing it to remove everything below a 3K or so. Cool. Remember, we still have our snare going there. So here it is again. Okay, and then I added a D-verb to it to give it a little bit of a washy vibe on the top end. So it's it's subtle, it's nothing crazy that's gonna pop out the speakers, but uh, just having some fun with it. Moving on from there, everything that you just saw me break down, with the exception of the subsplash, is headed into this bus called Loop. 
And in the loop, I've got the um, uh, the Culture Vulture from UAD. This one just came out a few months ago. And uh, this is actually the first time I used it. I actually, I think I even forgot that I owned it until I pulled it open for this song, wanted to give it some use. And uh, I really like what it did. Just gave it a little bit of grit. Um, let's bypass everything. We'll walk through it. Here's without it. Let's play just the loop so we're not fooled by the music going on there. Here's the loop without it. And then here's with it. That's subtle. You get a little bit of grit from the kick from that low end, but um, just giving a little vibe. Moving on to ah, this one makes a big difference and then pay attention to depth. Excuse me, the depth is only at 10% and watch how uh, awesome this affects the high end. Here's before. After. Four. Pretty neat, right? This is a free plug, and I've mentioned that before, but you can go to X for, uh, I think you can Google X for Records and type in OTT, and you'll find that one. Um, and it's AAX as well. Moving on, I had the uh, multi delay that I mentioned that the producer had, and that just kind of creates that movement. Pretty sweet. And last but not least, I've got Ozone 5 Imager. And remember, I talked about the sub splash, the reverb, how it was automated to come on on just that second hit. Well, by um, removing the middle content, the, the stuff down the middle from the sub reverb, I um, was able to get that out wide and concentrated on the sides. Well, now what I want is I want the, the low end of the loop itself, the kick, um, any meat from that snare below what, 200 hertz or so, 225, is going to be mono. It's going to stay central now. So you've got the splash that's going to give the side some oomph, and you've got the middle that's going to give um, it's just going to suck it in. It's a stereo loop, and I wanted the kick and snare to make sure that they were right down the middle. So I did that with this, and I just dropped it all the way down the middle. Here's without it. And then with it. Cool. So not that much of a difference, but if there was anything just kind of sneaking out of the middle a little bit, this keeps it locked right there down <clears throat> front and center down the middle and uh, all is well. So so there we have it. That is uh, hopefully going to help you to be creative when you're sent just a stereo loop. It could be a loop of anything you could do that with. Uh, various sorts of percussion, drums, a stereo full drum kit with kicks and air toms, the whole deal. Break out the cymbals. Um, could have fun with that. So Feel free to shoot me emails to david at davidglennrecording.com. Don't forget the proaudiofiles.com and my new site, themixacademy.com. We're going to take a song each month. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to mix it from start to finish and record the entire time, just like I should do this tutorial, but you're going to get starting the song, me hearing it for the first time, all the way through a finished mastered product, as well as three, four, five tutorials, interviewing the producer. I'm interviewing the songwriters. And uh, I'm going to give you tips, tricks, strategies. There's a forum. Got some of my uh, good buddies uh, in the industry, all working professionals that are going to be chiming in. All kinds of great stuff to come with that. And there's a bonus if you mention that you found me on the Pro Audio Files YouTube channel. I'm going to give you a sweet surprise in addition to the bonus that I'm already offering because you're going to get a free course from me. Uh, that's going to be included with your membership. Just 27 bucks a month. Go check that out. TheMixAcademy.com. Emails to david at davidglenrecording.com, and I'll catch you guys soon.